We are going to take a look at approximation algorithms for the Steiner tree problem and the traveling salesperson problem. More specifically, we're going to see a two approximation for the Steiner tree problem and a two approximation and then a 1.5 approximation for the metric traveling salesperson problem. So let's start with the Steiner tree problem. Here we are given a graph with positive edge rates and the vertices come in two types. So we have the terminals here shown as squares and those are the vertices we care about and then we have some additional vertices called Steiner vertices here shown in pink and a Steiner tree here now is a subtree that contains all of the terminals it may also include Steiner vertices but it does not need to include the Steiner vertices so for instance this is a Steiner tree and it has cost 4. So it is a Steiner tree because all of the terminals are included. We could have included the Steiner vertex, we decided not to. And the cost 4 is simply because if you add up the edge rates, they add up to 4. And not surprisingly, we are interested in the minimum cost Steiner tree. So we want to minimize the cost. And is this a solution with minimal cost? No, because there's a better option, namely the one that in this case actually includes the Steiner vertex. So this one here, it has cost three and still all terminals are included. So there are some special cases. So if all vertices are terminals, then asking for the minimum Steiner tree is actually simply asking for the uh, minimum spanning tree so then that is easy also if only two of the vertices are um, terminals then it's actually a shortest path query also that is easy but the Steiner tree problem in general is actually NP hard so it does make sense to look at approximation algorithms so the approximation algorithm that we are going to see is actually not for the Steiner tree problem, but for the metric Steiner tree problem, to which we will come next. But to be able to apply it to the Steiner tree problem, we will see a reduction. So but let's first look at the metric Steiner tree problem. It is exactly the same problem, just that we have further requirements on our graph and the edge rates. Namely, we now assume we have a complete graph and we want the edge rates, the cost function to be metric, which means it should fulfill the triangle inequality or stated differently if you look at the cost between a pair, then that should be smaller equal the cost of if I go from one of the vertices in that pair to another vertex and from that one even further. So essentially the cost along the straight the direct edge should be not more than a cost that you can get by going a detour. For instance, is this a metric instance? So it's obviously not. So two problems. Problem number one, obviously it is not complete. This edge is missing. But it is also not metric. Namely, if you look at this weight down here then we have five here but it is cheaper to go either here so here we have two plus one plus one that's four or e, this one would be the same three plus one is four so this weight here or cost here violates the metric property if we now replace this five by a four and also make the graph complete then this would be a metric instance because now we have the four here and no matter how we otherwise go two plus two or three plus one is not smaller than four and this is true for any of the edges so for instance if i look at this three here if i do a detour like this one two plus one this is not smaller than three also it's a complete graph so this is a complete graph and it is metric so we're going to see an approximation algorithm for the metric Steiner tree problem. We would like to have one for the Steiner tree problem. And uh, for that, what we're going to see is an approximation preserving or approximation factor preserving reduction between the Steiner tree problem and 
the metric standard problem. And I would like to do this a bit formally. Um, so we're going to first see the formalism and then we're going to, have to apply it uh, to the standard problem versus metric standard tree problem. So we are looking at a setting where we have two minimization problems, pi1 and pi2. So you should think of the pi1 as being the Steiner tree problem. Pi2 will be the metric Steiner tree problem. And we want to give an approximation preserving reduction. And that will be a map, actually two maps, F and G, which both are polynomial time computable or should be polynomial time computable with the following. So F should, if I have an instance of problem one, you should give me an instance of problem two with the property that on the, that instance, the optimal solution on instance two is has a cost smaller equal the optimal uh, um, solution on, or the cost of the optimal solution on instance one. Yeah, so imagine you have an instance of the standard two problem. We are now should be make a instance of the metric standard tree problem out of it with this property. So that's our f. Now the idea is I want to give an approximation algorithm now for problem two, so in my case the metric standard tree problem. This will give me some solution to the metric standard tree problem. And now I'm going to I want to construct from that a solution for my original problem. So pi one, problem one. So in our case, the Steiner tree problem. Let's call that S. So G should be a map, polynomial time computable map, that uh, given um, a solution to problem two, gives me a feasible solution to problem one with the property that the objective value for that solution is bounded from above by the objective value of uh, the solution that we had on problem for problem two. Yeah, and then this gives me, so I can transform this into an instance here. I can get a solution and then I can transform that solution back. And that then essentially gives me an algorithm for problem one. And so why is this interesting or why is it useful to have these two inequalities? So if we have this, so if we have an approximation preserving reduction, and let's assume I have an alpha approximation for problem two, then this gives me an alpha approximation for problem one. Let's prove this, and the proof is actually quite simple. So let's say we have this algorithm A, for problem two, which gives me an alpha approximation, and I have an instance to problem one. Then we do exactly what you would expect us to do. We use F to get an instance of problem two. Then we use our algorithm on that instance to get a solution to problem two. And then we use the map back G to get a solution to problem one again. And because these were polynomial time computable, all of this can be done in polynomial time. Now, we of course want to bound the cost of this solution S, so the objective value that we get. And now we use the second inequality that we had for approximation preserving reductions, which says that this is bounded uh, from above by the objective value for t. Obviously, this being an alpha approximation, this is smaller equal alpha times opt. And now the first inequality told me that this opt is smaller equal the opt for problem one. And now if you put all of that together, we have an alpha approximation for problem one. So all of this looks nice on paper, but let's see whether we can use this now for the Steiner tree problem. So what we're going to show is the following. There is an approximation preserving reduction from the Steiner tree problem to the metric Steiner tree problem. 
For that, we have to give these maps f and g and prove that the inequalities hold. So what is the map f? We will start with an instance to the Steiner triple. So this will live on a graph G1. So that's my, my input, this graph G1 with edge rates C1. And we have terminals and we have Steiner vertices. So this, for instance. And we will transform this into a metric instance. So what do we need to do to make this a metric instance? So we're going to have the same vertices. Uh, we're going to make this a complete graph. Yeah, that is necessary. And now we have to define edge rates, which are metric. And we're going to do that by what is called the metric closure of this graph G1. So what is the metric closure of the graph G1? This is as edge weight. I'm always going to take the shortest path distance in G1. The shortest path distance, I then mean, I mean, the smallest. So from here to here, for instance, I'm going to take the path with smallest summed cost. So for instance, for this edge and this edge and this edge, this is simply the weights that they already had. But if you now look at this edge down here, the shortest path here, you can pick either this one, 3 plus 1 is 4, or you can pick 2 plus 1 plus 1, also 4. So let's pick that one. And that is, there's no shorter path. So then this edge will get a 4. And now this one here, so that one has a 3 here. And if you look at, at alternatives, 3, 6, shortest is 3 it will get a 3. And then there's this other one here, which was actually not even in the graph previously, that we can get here, 1 plus 1. So this will get a weight of 2. And that is now, so that's the metric closure of G1, that's our G2. And it is complete, and it is metric by construction. Now we have to prove the first property, namely that the optimum on this one is bounded by the optimum of that one. So this is what we want to show. Opt for instance 2, small equal opt for instance 1. And for that we're going to consider an optimal solution for instance 1. So this would be the optimal solution in our example. And this we now transform into the solution for problem two, I mean, there's actually no transformation needed because we can simply take exactly the same solution. So this is also a feasible solution here. If I take, if I take this, these edges here, because all edges that are present in the G1 are also present in G2, because here we just take the complete graph. So the edges are there. And now let's look at the optimum for this instance. The cost of the optimal solution, for instance, two, is obviously bounded by the cost of this given solution here, and that cost is C2, so cost function 2 of B star. Now, when taking the metric closure, we only reduce costs. So now if I go back to C1, I'm only increasing costs. So C2 of B star is bounded from above by C1 of B star, the co corresponding costs here. And this is opt or the optimum cost for instance one. So now we have this inequality. So next we need to construct this map G which takes a solution for problem two and maps it to a solution for problem one. So let's say we have a solution for problem two so that will be a Steiner tree living in G2 so for instance this one and we're now going to build a Steiner tree in uh, graph G1 on the left in several steps. So first of all we're going to take the following graph. We take every edge here in the Steiner tree and we place it by the shortest path between the two, the two endpoints in the graph G1. So let's do this by example. So first of all, we have this top edge here. 
and that is of course the, the corresponding shortest path is the edge itself. Likewise here, as the shortest path, I can again simply take the edge itself. And now there's this edge here, and the shortest path between these two vertices is not this edge here, but it is a path, so for instance, this path here. Up, right, down. So I get this graph here, and okay, some edges might be here several times, so for any edge that occurs in this way, I only keep one copy. So now I have a solution which has a property that the cost, so it's not yet a solution because it's not a Steiner tree, but I have this graph. Um, and the property of this graph is that the cost of it is smaller equal to the cost of uh, the tree here. Because we always replace an edge by the shortest path. Costs here were defined as the shortest path distances on the left. So in that way, essentially it stays the same, but if there was an edge that was there twice, then I get a smaller equal. Otherwise it would have even been equal. So the cost of G1 prime is smaller equal to the cost of this tree. And all of the terminals are included. It might not be a tree, but now we simply take a spanning tree of G1 prime here. I just remove this edge. And this is now a tree. It includes all the terminals, so it's a Steiner tree. Its cost is smaller equal to the cost of G1 prime, because I was just deleting edges, which is smaller equal to this cost here, which gives me exactly what we wanted to have, namely that the objective value of the solution that I've constructed here is smaller equal to the objective value of the solution that I started off with here. So this now completes the approximation preserving reduction between the Steiner tree problem or from the Steiner tree problem to the metric Steiner tree problem, which means it's sufficient to make uh, approximation algorithm for the metric Steiner tree problem. And this then immediately also is an uh, approximation algorithm for the Steiner tree problem. So let's do that. So we're going to do a true approximation for the Steiner tree problem, or more specifically, actually, the metric Steiner tree problem. And the solution is very simple. We simply compute a minimum spanning tree of the subgraph induced by the terminal set. Well, the subgraph induced by the terminal set means we take the terminal sets and the edges in between. Since it's a complete graph, there are these edges always in between. And we build a spanning tree there, a minimum spanning tree. And this is what we're going to take as our approximation. And then we will need to prove that this gives us a true approximation. Let's have an example here. So here we have our metric graph G. Now we take the induced subgraph. So we essentially throw away the Steiner vertex here. And we are going to build a minimum spanning tree here. Minimum spanning tree, so we have cost two, two, four. This will be simply like that. This is our minimum spanning tree. Let's prove that this gives us a true approximation. And for that, I consider the optimal Steiner tree B star and its cost. So, okay, so this is how this might look like. Let's assume this is the optimal Steiner tree. It is obviously not a tree within the induced subgraph of the terminals because we do have Steiner vertices here. We are going to transform this, first of all, into an Eulerian multigraph in the following way. We simply duplicate every edge. So this is now shown here. So now my new graph is the graph of dotted blue edges. So every edge is here simply twice. The cost of my blue graph is obviously simply twice the cost of B star. Therefore, the cost of B prime, which is my blue graph, is equals two times optimal, no? because B star was a minimum Steiner tree. And this is now an Eulerian graph. Eulerian graph means there's a Eulerian tour. The Eulerian tour means there's a cycle which 
goes through all edges. There is an Eulerian tour, exactly if the vertex degrees are all even. And because we duplicated every edge, we essentially immediately get that all of the vertex degrees are even. So we have a Euler, therefore this is a Eulerian graph. Okay, so you might, just as a kind of reminder, you might know Eulerian tours, or actually Eulerian paths from this here. There's this kind of children thing where you draw this house. And so this is a Eulerian path. Here we have, if you look at all of the vertices, all vertices except for two of them, that means these two, all others have even degree. And therefore, if I start on one of the odd degree vertices and go through this graph and end up at the other odd degree vertex, I can do that by going through all edges. And if all degrees are even, I can or even end up at the same vertex again. And then I have this Eulerian tour here. Yeah, so we're going to take this Eulerian tour. And the cost of this Eulerian tour, obviously, is simply still the same. Um, and therefore equals to opt. So now we're going to make use of the fact that we have a metric instance. We are namely now constructing an Hamiltonian path in the induced subgraph of the terminals by sh shortcutting Steiner vertices and by shortcutting terminals that we have already visited. So let's see that by an example. So let's say we start here. My Eulerian tour goes, those are the first two steps. We wanted to skip over the Steiner vertices. So my first edge goes here. And now here I would go up left. Again, we skip Steiner vertices. So we end up here. Now I go down right. Skipping the Steiner vertex, I end up here. Next, I go up here. And then I would continue here, here, and there. I skip this one because I already visited it. I skip that one because it's a Steiner vertex. So then I immediately go here. I skip the Steiner vertex and end up here, end up there. So now I have a Hamiltonian path. And why is that interesting? This is interesting because I can, first of all, bound its cost by the cost of the Eulerian tool. So this is the case because we have the triangle inequality. So anytime I shortcut, so instead of these two edges, I take that edge. But because of the triangle inequality, this one is not longer than those two. So by shortcutting, I do not make it longer. And therefore, this is at most as long as the tour I started off with, which is two opt. So the length of this Hamiltonian path is bounded by two times opt. And, and this is our final trick here, this tour in particular is a spanning tree in the graph induced by the terminals. Because, okay, all terminals are included, so it's a it's spanning, and it is a tree. I mean, a path is a tree. Therefore, its cost is at least as large as the cost of the minimum spanning tree. And so the minimum spanning tree in this graph has a cost smaller equal to this tour, and this tour has a cost smaller equal two times opt. Putting all of this together, we have the approximation factor that we wanted to have, because we now have minimum spanning tree as cost bounded by two opt. So this gives us a two approximation. Let's see whether it's tight. So yes, it is, and here is an example. So let's start constructing a graph in the following way. We first of all take a complete graph on n vertices, it's called Kn. And all of these will be terminals, and all of the edges will have weight two. Additionally, we will have one Steiner vertex. And this Steiner vertex will connect with an edge of cost one to all other vertices. 
So now if you take a minimum spanning tree in the induced subgraph of the terminals, which is Kn, then its cost will simply be, so we have n minus 1 edges, and each edge has cost 2, because I'm only living in, in, the, in the graph down here. So this gives me 2 times n minus 1. The optimal solution, of course, yeah, what's the optimal solution? What's the optimal Steiner tree? Of course, you just take this Steiner vertex connected to all of the terminals. And because the cost for each of these edges is just 1, I will get a cost of n because I need these are n edges. 1 for each of the terminals. And this means that we have an approximation factor. So the minimum spanning tree gives me an approximation factor of 2 times n minus 1 divided by n in this example, which for large n converges to 2. Are there better approximation algorithms? Yes, there are. So currently the best known is the following. So there is a 1.39 approximation factor for the Steiner tree problem. And we also know that unless p equals np, there cannot be an algorithm approximating this within a factor of 1.0105. So next we're going to look at approximation algorithms for the traveling salesperson problem, TSP for short. So our setting is we have again a complete graph, we have positive edge rates and we're now looking for a Hamiltonian cycle of minimum cost. So Hamiltonian cycle means we have a cycle which goes through every vertex exactly once and then ends up at the vertex where we started. So can we use here similar ideas as we had for the minimum Steiner tree? So yes we can. We will use all the familiar ingredients because essentially we already saw what we needed to have there because what we did for the Steiner tree we then took a minimum spanning tree we then took a Eulerian tour and from there constructed a Hamiltonian path and would we have done the very last step to actually go to the starting vertex which was the Eulerian tour we could have simply have done then we would indeed have a Hamiltonian cycle so we can reuse all of those ideas, but all of that was in the metric setting. So we are also here going to look at the metric setting. And actually, as we're going to see, for the non-metric TSP, all of this will not work anymore. So let's look at this algorithm step by step. We are going to compute a minimum spanning tree. In the Steiner tree problem, we had uh, the Steiner vertices and build the minimum Steiner tree only on the terminals and now we only have vertices that count so the minimum spanning tree is simply on all of my vertices. That's step one so here in green we see a uh, spanning tree if you're wondering so in gray um, that is my complete graph although I'm not actually drawing a complete graph otherwise it would be a mess. Now step two we're going to double all of the edges, and that is exactly what we did in for the Steiner tree problem. Find a Eulerian tour, let's call that E. Do the shortcuts, all of that is familiar. And the claim is this gives us a two approximation, and this is actually essentially the same analysis as we already have seen for the Steiner tree problem. So but once more, minimum Steiner tree, double the edges, take a Eulerian tour, shortcuts and that's all so let's have a look here at our minimum spanning tree so first of all the minimum spanning tree its cost and this is now important because for approximation algorithms we always want to have a lower bound we have this lower bound here because the cost of the minimum spanning tree is smaller equal the optimum cost for Hamiltonian cycle and the reason for this is 
that if you take your Hamiltonian cycle, and this is what we did for the standard free problem already, you take the cycle, take out one edge, then this reduces the cost. But now we have a minimum, no, we have a spanning tree, it's not a minimum spanning tree, but it's, so we take out one edge, we get a cost that is smaller. Because it's a spanning tree, the cost is at least as large as the cost for the minimum spanning tree, therefore the cost of the minimum spanning tree is shorter equal or smaller equal the optimal cost for the TSP. Now we, for the Julian tour, we double all of the edges, meaning that cost is two times the cost of the minimum spanning tree. So this is smaller equal two times opt. And now if you look at the tour that we get by shortcutting within the Eulerian tour, then this tour is at most that long because of the metric property of our graph. Yeah, so shortcutting does not make the tour longer. So we shortcut until we just only go through all of the vertices once. We get a cost smaller equal the cost of the Eulerian tour. This is two times the cost of the minimum spanning tree because that's how we constructed it. And that is smaller equal two times opt. And that's already all of it. So this proves that the algorithm is a two approximation. Let's check whether the approximation factor is indeed two so that the analysis is tight. And we can see this by this example. So we have a complete graph on n vertices. There are edges of cost one, those are in pink, and the purple ones have cost two. You see we have this special vertex here where we only have pink edges, otherwise there are pink edges, a pink cycle here, so that we can actually get a TSP tour of the following length. So let's make this a question. So what is the length of the optimal tour here? It is simply n because I can make a tour of pink edges through n vertices. This has cost n. So the next question is, what does the algorithm compute? And this depends on the Eulerian tour that we pick. So let me draw a Eulerian tour. Well, let me start with drawing uh, the minimum spanning tree. So minimum spanning tree, I can take this one here. Again, other choices would be possible. And if I take that one, then a possible Eulerian tour would be, I start in the middle, let's number the order in which I visit them. So this is one. Let's say I go here next two. Go to the middle, so that's three. Maybe I go here next, four, middle, so that would be five. Let's say I go down, six, middle, seven, up, eight, middle, nine, here, 10, 11 is back to the middle. Now, if you look at the Hamiltonian cycle that we get by doing this, we start in the middle, sure. I go to number two. Now I skip the middle, I immediately go to four. I skip the middle, I immediately go to six. I skip the middle, go to eight. Skip the middle, go to 10. Go to the middle, and then this is my cycle. So here it's drawn again. If you now add up those numbers, essentially, we have two pink edges, all other edges are purple, so we have n minus two purple edges. Those give me two times n minus two, so two n minus four plus the two pink edges, two n minus two. So this is what the algorithm gives in this example. And if you look at this, two n minus two divided by n for large n, this converges to two, so the analysis is tight. Can we improve this? So can we get a better approximation factor? The answer obviously is yes, because I already said that we would see a 1.5 approximation. So let's see where we lost the factor two here. So we lost it by doubling all the edges. I mean, by doubling all the edges, we get this factor two. So we need to avoid this. So we need to do something else instead. What we are going to do instead is the following. We again start with a minimum spanning tree. So here I, Okay, do the minimum spanning tree. The gray edges are simply part of the underlying graph. I again didn't draw the, 
complete complete graph obviously as you see and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to, to look at the odd degree vertices in the minimum spending tree and I'm going to build a min cost perfect matching on these odd degree vertices. Yeah, so if you look at the degrees in the minimum spending tree, so you have degree 1 here, 3, 1, 2, and so on. Actually, this is the only even degree vertex. What I'm saying is I take all of the odd degree vertices, so all of the other vertices, and build a min cost perfect matching on them. So perfect matching means I have, for every vertex here, I have one edge, and min cost means I select the one that has the overall minimum cost in terms of sum of costs. Assuming I would have this now, then I do the same trick as before. So now given this matching plus the spanning tree, if I consider this graph, then this is a graph where all degrees are even because, okay, if they were even before, I didn't touch them. If they are odd before, I added exactly one edge to that vertex and therefore it's even now. So I have a, a graph, every degree is even. I can build a Eulerian tour, that is what you see here. And now I do shortcuts as before. So I skip vertices that I've seen so far. And this gives me a TSP tour. So there is a couple of questions that we have to answer here. Um, so first of all, the approximation factor. Why do we get three half? Then, the next question is, so how do we compute a perfect matching or min cost perfect matching? So for that, there are algorithms and we're not going to look at those here, but that can be done in polynomial time. So the final question is, why do we actually have a perfect matching at all? So and why might we not have a perfect matching? So to have a perfect matching, we will need to have an even number of vertices for which we are building the matching. So we are building the matching on the odd degree vertices, so we have to show that we have an even number of odd degree vertices. And then because the underlying graph is a complete graph, then we have a perfect matching. So why is this the case? So why do we have an even number of odd degree vertices? This follows from the handshaking lemma. So what does the handshaking lemma say? It says that in a graph, two times the number of edges is the sum of the degrees over all vertices. And why does this imply that we have an even number of odd degree vertices? Now let's rewrite the sum. So this is the sum of the degrees V in V, V degree of V is even plus the sum of the degrees and the same, but the degree is odd. Now, this number is even because I have a factor 2 here. This number is even because I'm summing up even numbers. In conclusion, the sum of the degrees of the odd degree vertices is even. Now, for a sum, for this sum to be even, we need to have an even number of summits because we are adding up odd numbers and the sum of odd numbers is only even if the number of numbers in there is even. So we can conclude that we have to have an even number of vertices of odd degree. So far, so good. So what remains is to show this factor of 3 half. And for this, we can use the following argument, or what we wanted to prove is that the cost of the perfect matching is at most half of the cost of the optimal TSP tour. And I write here briefly because it's at most half of the cost of the cycle. What do I mean by that? So let's, for simplicity, assume that the tour that I do here was actually the optimal TSP tour. I mean, this is right now the the one constructed, but let's simply assume that. Now I can first of all uh, shortcut past all of the even degree vertices to get an even shorter tour on the odd degree vertices. So let me do that. So we only had one even degree vertex, so this is actually quite simple here. Now I'm going to skip the even degree vertex. 
Okay, so now I have a tour through the uh, odd degree vertices. And so let's assume this the, the tour I started off with was the optimal tour, then this is at most as long as optimal. Now I can decompose this into two perfect matchings in the following way. I simply take every segment edge and that's a perfect matching. And all the other edges are also, also form a perfect matching. Let's call the per red one here M1, and the remaining edges I can call M2. And let's call this tour C star for opt and odd because I skipped the even degree vertices. So, what I now have is that the cost of M1 plus the cost of M2 equals the cost of the optimum tour shortened to only go through the odd vertices, which is at most the opt. By pigeonhole principle, one of these two has to be shorter than half of this. And so the minimum of those two is smaller than half of this, because otherwise if they would be oh, smaller equal, because if they would both be larger, then their sum also would be larger. This means that the cost of M is smaller equal, let's say, min of those two, which makes it smaller equal this divided by two, which, so let's make this a min, this divided by two, which is smaller equal op divided by two. And therefore, we have this inequality. And now putting things together, we have that the cost of the tour that we constructed uh, is smaller equal to the cost of the Eulerian tour. The Eulerian tour we put together from the edges of the minimum spanning tree and the matching. So this equals cost of T plus cost of M. This is smaller equal opt. This we just saw is smaller equal opt half. So this is smaller equal three divided by two times opt. Now we can ask if this analysis is tight, and yes, it is. Here is the example. So here we have lots of cost one edges, and this edge down here has cost n half. So you might ask, why don't we make it even more expensive? We are in the setting of the metric TSP, so this length cannot be longer than that plus that plus that plus that. And this example is constructed that half of the vertices are here, half of the vertices are here, drawn it up. So this edge, we can, the largest cost that we could give it is n divided by 2. Now the optimal tool, obviously, can simply use only cost 1 edges and therefore has length n. But the algorithm, if it computes this zigzag here as the minimum spanning tree, then only two odd degree vertices remain. And the only possible perfect matching here is taking this edge. And the cost of this is n minus 1 for the green edges plus n half. So this is roughly 1.5 n, so the ratio is just slightly below 1.5 and for large n it converges to 1.5. Now can we do better? Yes we can. But this is a stellar result. So first of all it is known that we cannot approximate metric TSP better than in this factor which is just something slightly above 1. But in 2020, there was, after many years, yeah, so this newspaper article says it, after 44 years, the first improvement from 1.5 to 1.5 minus 0 0.000 and so on, 10 to the minus 36. So only a tiny improvement but a big step forward because it shows us 
that 1.5 is not the right answer. So this is a problem where the actual value lies. If we have even stronger conditions, namely we have a Euclidean instance, that is our vertices are actually points in a Euclidean space, for instance in the plane, and the distances are the distances, Euclidean distances, then there is a one plus epsilon approximation for any fixed epsilon. More specifically, what we have here is a polynomial time approximation scheme. In contrast, if we weaken the condition, so if we do not ask the problem, the instance to be metric, so just to look at the general TSP, then it cannot be approximated within any factor, alpha of n, unless p equals np. So finally, let's have a look at exactly this result. And it's quite simple. So assume for the sake of contradiction, it's not really a contradiction, it's just we will end up saying p equals np, that there is a polynomial time R approximation algorithm for the TSP. Now I'm going to give you an instance where this results in a strange result, namely the following. So I have I start with a graph, with an, uh, and this is now not an instance for the TSP, but for the Hamiltonian cycle problem. So this is not a complete graph, but simply a graph on vertices. And Hamiltonian cycle problem, the question is, is there a Hamiltonian cycle in this graph? Now, this problem is NP hard. Meaning there's no polynomial time algorithm unless P equals NP. From this graph, we're going to construct a TSP instance as follows. For all edges that are already here, we're going to have an edge with cost one. Now we're going to make our graph a complete graph and all other edges will get rate r times n plus one. So all of these green edges have cost one and all edges that I haven't drawn so far, so in particular those blue edges here will have cost r times n plus one. Now, let's look at the optimal tour. The cost of the optimal tour, if the original graph has an Hamiltonian cycle, is simply n, because we can simply follow that Hamiltonian cycle. Each edge has cost one, so that gives us n. If there's no Hamiltonian cycle, then to make a Hamiltonian cycle for the TSP, we will have to use at least one of the expensive edges. So at least one of this, these n edges has to instead be r times n plus 1, and then best case n minus 1 remaining edges of cost 1. So if there's no Hamiltonian cycle, cost is at least, the cost of the TSP tool is at least this value. So to draw examples, so here we have a Hamiltonian cycle. So then we simply get cost n. If there wouldn't be, then we would have to have one that includes a blue edge, and then we would have at least this cost. So now if there is a Hamiltonian cycle, then the cost of the algorithm is small equal r times n, and only if this is the case, we can even more specifically, so it's only it's only smaller equal r times n if there is this, and then it is actually n. But if there's no, no Hamiltonian cycle, it's larger r times n. But what that means is that if we have an r approximation, it either I just look at give, does it give me a value smaller equal r times n? If it does, I can say yes, there was actually a Hamiltonian cycle here. If it gives me a value larger r times n, I can say no, there's no Hamiltonian cycle. And that means that with this r approximation, I could solve the Hamiltonian cycle problem, meaning an r approximation, a polynomial time r approximation for the TSP would imply that the Hamiltonian cycle problem is in P, and this can only be the case if P equals NP. And that is that. So to wrap up, we saw a two approximation for the Steiner tree problem, actually a two approximation for the metric Steiner tree problem, but an approximation preserving reduction from the Steiner tree problem to the metric Steiner tree problem, so the two approximations also for the Steiner tree problem. 
And then we saw a true approximation also for the metric TSP. Um, the ingredients always were Eulerian tour, minimum spanning tree, obviously the metric property, and the Hamiltonian path in the case of the Steiner tree problem. And then for the 1.5 approximation, we additionally used this min cost perfect matching on the odd degree vertices. And so for the standard tree problem, we have this approximation preserving reduction. In contrast, for the TSP, the metric TSP and the TSP are really different. For one, we get this approximation. For the other one, it's not approximable.